Good morning. My name is Natalie Rubin, and I am a sixth form day student from Sidbury, Connecticut. I want to welcome all grandparents and visitors to our chapel. Today, I want to reflect with you all on an experience I had this summer. For three weeks this July, I traveled to Kenya and participated in a program called STRIVE, which puts together community service trips for runners who wish to train with the advantages of high altitude. Runners of all levels and from all around the globe come to Kenya to train. And I was immersed not only in STRIVE's group of 11 students, but in a community of runners. We stayed at the High Altitude Training Center, or HATC, 9,000 feet up, looking out over the beautiful Rift Valley and surrounded by E10, one of the biggest running towns in Kenya. The HATC embodied all of what I came to know the country as. Friendly, beautiful, and home to a lot of fast runners. HATC became home base for us. And one person who stood out in welcoming us to the country was our strength coach and aspiring Olympian, Timo. Running core class three times a week, Timo would walk around the room, not taking any excuses for a skipped class or a dropped plank. While simultaneously mocking and encouraging us in class, he was always willing to give insights into his community and country. He was also the man to declare he wanted 12 kids to field his own football team. Funny, charming, and a self-proclaimed crazy man, Timo became the person unafraid to befriend and push a bunch of American teens. Running while surrounded by Olympic and world champions was a surreal experience for me, and also extremely humbling. There's nothing like the feeling of keeping up with the Kenyan until you realize they're warming up. <laughs> one time, our group participated in a community workout, where we'd go one minute as fast as we could, and the next minute a recovery jog. At the start, I sprinted out, and to my surprise, I was near the front. At this point, I was thinking to myself, I must be pretty fast. Then, just as I was getting tired and needing that recovery job, the watches of 100 Kenyan feet and everyone took off sprinting. Apparently, we did the slow jog first. <laughs> A few minutes later, as I was walking off heaving for oxygen, I vowed never again to try to keep up with the Kenyans. To provide some context into Kenya's running culture, locals estimate there to be 600 elite runners around E10 alone. Running has become so ingrained in Kenyan culture that medal-earning runners are the heroes of the country, and also some of the wealthiest. Kenyan athletes good enough to win races with high payouts can be set for life. And for many Kenyans, running seems a way anyone can get rich. It's not that simple, though. While anyone can try their shot at the world stage, most will never make it. For most Kenyans, getting rich through running will just be a dream. Timo, our over-exuberant trainer, snapped his hamstring in the last 100 meters of his Olympic trial when in a position to qualify. Now, at the age of 31, when his window of opportunity seems to be closing, Timo still trains and continues to focus on achieving his dream of competing in the Olympics. That quality of perseverance can be attributed to what I saw of the Kenyan culture as a whole. At the school our group had the privilege of working at, the 8th graders were only two months away from their Kenyan Certificate of Primary Education exam. In Kenya, depending on how you do on this exam, decides where you can go to high school. The top scorers go to fully funded boarding schools, where they will get the chance to get into universities. And the best scorers in those schools may get the opportunity to be placed in an American college. In this particular school, maybe one or two kids will be in that top tier, but when I asked the students, every 8th grader was sure they'd be able to make it. One kid, named O'Day, who I became particularly close to, declared that when he was a physicist studying in the United States, he would come and visit me. Of course, at 15, he is old enough to know that very few kids get that kind of opportunity to study abroad. And yet, he never lost that sense that he could accomplish anything, and still takes extreme pride in everything he does. This certainty was the same as what I saw in Timo when he talked about his running abilities. Many speculate that this culture of self-assurance is one of the roots of Kenya's dominance in distance running. For me, this attitude that seems to be so common in Kenya was refreshing, granting me a new perspective to view things in a more positive light. It allowed me to question why I wouldn't assume I wouldn't be good at something, or opt out of trying something new at the risk of embarrassing myself. 
Yet, as much as I loved Kenya, there were some things I was happy to leave behind. Like what my group leader lovingly described as Kenya time, which locals take the time they're supposed to meet you and add a few hours. A time that stands out in particular is when we went to meet Wilson Kitsing, former marathon world record holder at his restaurant. His waitresses took an hour to take our orders, and then the cooks proceeded to bring out meal after meal that we had not asked for. The entire time, Wilson looked completely amused, and as we Americans got more and more hungry, he seemed to think it was more and more funny. So, as the Americans complained about their appetite and missing the first half of the World Cup game, Wilson and the rest of the patrons were unfazed. We were the only ones who seemed to mind that our meal took up the entirety of the evening. So although I was happy to get back to a place where time seemed to matter, I really appreciated the relaxed and patient way Kenyans I met went through their days, and it really gave me something to consider. While I thought it was crazy to completely disregard appointments and schedules, Wilson Kipsang found our group's adherence to time is laughable. I, someone who hates being late, would have to remind myself that just because it wasn't the way I lived doesn't make it any less valid of a way. If I had constantly been comparing Kenya to America and critiquing customs that didn't seem good enough to me, instead of learning to think a little differently, I'd be stuck with the same perspective I went to Kenya with. And the best part about going to a new place is being able to take the things you love back home and leave everything else behind. I can stay on time for class, which I'm sure my teachers will appreciate, while attempting to take back a little confidence to try something new my senior year. I am incredibly grateful for the relatively small insight I got into Kenya's culture. I wish I could have had more time there, because everything surprised me. From teaching at school, to crazy trainers, to the sheer number of talented runners I met. But I recognize that I do not have to go halfway across the world to get a new experience. I look forward to more surprises as I make my way through senior year here at Westminster, and new experiences as I leave for college next fall. Thank you.